a podcast. It's a podcast. Yo. What? What? Where are we? <laughs> What's good, man? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I do believe uh, we have convened at this particular time to resume the Funhouse podcast. Uh, myself being kid, yourself being play. Together we are kid and play, and we are here for another exciting, exciting, scintillating episode of the Funhouse podcast where we discuss all things hip hop the culture how it's affected by it. play you're an expert in that field i do believe you're responsible for teaching uh young people how to appreciate uh, the culture would that be accurate really the history you know uh just taking my passion uh something that i believe god used to save my life hip hop culture and just you know, letting them know the origin of a lot of stuff. For a lot of them, they're really surprised when they hear the the, the original music for stuff that they enjoy, uh, what we call samples and things of that nature. But I wouldn't call myself an expert, but my passion energizes me for it to know a little something, something, you know. And it's only a right. extra benefit that we just happen to be in the mix, if you know what I'm saying. But in for you. Mix. Having a, more of an open ear to the younger generation and hopeful future classics that will uh, add to the uh, the classics that we love from the era in which we're from and 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 celebrate and represent. I keep my ears to the streets. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. And on that note, oh, we want to thank everybody again for the right. love, the support, all the comments, very positive, um, all the love and uh, putting us in the. Uh, in the top 25. Hopefully we've gotten a little better than that. But I mean, I like what I'm hearing. I like what I'm seeing. What do you think? Yeah, top 25% of all Apple podcasts. But we got to give also get a big shout out to Urban One. Uh, all streaming platforms, Spotify, YouTube. Please like and subscribe so that you can. Uh, uh, we want you to depend on us for our uh, sometimes uh, intelligent and sometimes uh, not as intelligent uh commentary on the culture um uh you know a little a little bit behind the scenes if if uh if you're just getting hip to the funhouse podcast uh sometimes we lean a little different way as as i stated play is definitely fond of the classic hip hop uh styles and artists um i, I lean myself to the uh, to the to the youngins uh keep my videos on and try to see uh, what they're doing, and then, uh, then we bring it together, you know. Like, and we, we get rid of that word versus. We make it the new school meeting, the exactly. the 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 old school. I don't like that term. I call it classic. But ba right. uh, with all that being said, uh, you ready to get into our songs, plural? Because you have one, and I have one. Our songs of the day. Or the yeah, songs, we like a song, songs of song the day. You should always have a song of the day to kind of get your day going, whatever it may be. Um, we are gonna start. All right, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna let everybody know my uh, my new school joint. Uh, I peeped this the other day, uh, and I caught the video as well. And uh, the song is called "Came Out of Beast." Came out of beast, and it's actually the it's, this is a new artist, uh, and I want to get her name right. It's Flu J, Flu J, Flu J Johnson. Matter of fact, and not only is she a a, a rapper, she's actually a basketball player. Uh, with uh, the LSU Tigers that actually won uh, the national championship. Uh, and on this particular song, Came Out of Beast, Lil Wayne is on the song as well. And I think we'll probably talk about him a little bit later because he's he's been in the news for things uh, he's so I've, so I've heard with a yeah, slew of others. Right, yeah. but um, I, did see the, I did see the video as well as listen to the song. Uh, you know, it's got that, it's got that down bottom, got that New Orleans, uh, kind of vibe to it. Wayne spitting on it really, really hard. Um, it's produced by a cat uh, named uh, Dollar Baby, or who knows? Oh, but, yeah, I, I'm assuming it's a dude. It just got released this summer. And I think it's interesting that a, a top champion athlete like Flu J, Flu J Johnson, a champion athlete, is actually getting out in this uh, in this game. 
uh, the rap game. And uh, it, was, it was tight. The video was tight. I actually had her college uh, coach, who's this white lady, a uh, well-known white lady coach, Kim Mulkey. And she was all in the video, and uh, Wayne was in there spitting. So, yeah, that's my new joint. I think it's worth well, the time. You, before you go any further, I think what I find so interesting about that, because, you, you know, you and I, the circles in which we travel, especially socializing, there's always been basically three elements at those kind of functions. There'll be the, the entertainer, the rappers, hip-hop. There'll be the athletes. And then there'll, there'll be ones of questionable occupations. We'll put it that way. But how long have we known of people in sports? Like there's always been this saying that uh, athletes, basketball players, football players always want to be rappers. Rappers are at least were one time athletes. So I had a promising career. And then the other element does what that other element does. But no one, to my knowledge, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, has been successful with that transition, being an athlete and have a successful recording career, rapping career. So, I mean, the age that's, of the woman, the age of the woman, good. the age of the woman is incredible because here's someone that sounds like, yeah. based on what you're telling me, who is accomplishing that, you know? Yeah, well, she's very young. She's 20. Uh, she's still playing basketball at, at, at LSU. She's still, a, a you know, a competing basketball player. She's still on the team. She hasn't graduated or moved to the WNBA yet. But, but is she good point, on the mic? Is she doing a thing on the mic? Oh, no, no. She, she was tight. Fire. She was very tight. She was tight. She was, no, she, was, she was rhyming hard. She was rhyming very hard. The beat was hard. Um, No, it was, no she was dope. She was dope. I don't know. We um, might have yeah. a first here, but not only a, a, a very successful, accomplished <laughs> athlete on her way to it, as I hear, yeah, but and uh, think, having a promising recording career. Yeah, think back, though. Shaq, Shaq had a pretty good, had, had a, a nice run. And that was when he, he was very young as well. Yeah, Shaq, Shaq had a few. Yeah, Shaq had a few joints out there. Maybe he was doing them joints with the Foo Snickens and all that. And he had that "You Can't Stop the Rain." He had, he had a few joints. Okay, yeah, well, joints. yeah. Well, maybe I'll put him in my uh, my classic era uh, column on one episode. But anyway, speaking of the oh. ladies, you know, my classic of the day is our girl Sweet T. You know, Queen's Own. Uh, she had a joint call on the Smooth Tip that was released in 1988. Produced by our friend, our manager, our producer, Mr. Herbie Lovebug, and the Invincibles. You remember that joint? We we had an appearance in that in that music video, by the way. We were in that video. <laughs> our post our poster our poster was on the wall oh. Oh, in, yeah, the, in the recording session. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was very back in the garage, right? Yeah, it was right. Yeah. Well, you know, Herbie's joint, but yeah, our, you know, we we represented and we had a presence via. Uh, graphics uh, post on the wall throughout. Right, right, but, right. Yeah, that's Sweet What's Tea. Up? Like I said, 1988, classic joint. She's still out there doing her thing. So big, big up and big shout out to uh, to Sweet Tea, our girl. Number, number love. That's what's up. Moving right along, because uh, unlike some other <laughs> episodes we have, we actually have a guest coming. So we want to, we want to, we want to, we want to. <laughs> I wish you cut that out, man. It's like you give the impression that we Somebody have no guests. Nobody's returning. Call. Nobody's returning phone calls. No, well, we got so. we got a return phone call. We, we get plenty of return. One. We get plenty of them. It's just a matter of <laughs> scheduling. Us being two guys that are still out there on the road, and you know all that it. good stuff. But yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. We, we got to, like you said, we have a guest. Right. All right. But before we do that, uh, we have our segment: uh, say less or doing the most. Uh, what you got? Okay. Well, this this has been the topic uh, as of late, uh, particularly amongst the uh, the culture, the hip hop community, uh, uh, and and I was I was a bit surprised. Surprised. I'm a big football fan. You and, are. Um, it was recently announced that Kendrick Lamar, who's had a huge year this year, is going to be the halftime entertainment, the Pepsi halftime show for right. uh, of uh, of next year's Super Bowl or this season's Super Bowl. Right. And um, it was a bit of a controversy because I think uh, the, the Super Bowl being in New Orleans uh, this season, everybody mm -hmm. kind of thought we're, or we're hoping that uh, Lil Wayne and maybe that whole uh, New Orleans contingent uh, would be a part of the, uh, you know, the extravaganza. Of course, that, of course, of course. Right. On paper, that, that's what you would think. Um, but uh, that's not the case. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation going around. You know, obviously, 
Uh, people know that Jay-Z is involved uh, in that process. I don't know if he's the only person responsible for it or makes the, the decision. Uh, you know, Pepsi is the sponsor, so I'm sure they have to say it. And uh, NFL is the NFL. They're the shield. They're the big dog. They're the ones that that's, uh, you know, between them and Pepsi, they're paying for all of it. So I think um, and people have their opinions. Obviously, uh, nobody's had a bigger year than Kendrick Lamar. Um, but Lil Wayne is, you know, turn around. He's 20 years plus in the game and he's from that region, uh, very big in that region. So uh, I don't know. People people have their, their thoughts on both sides um, and and people are hinting. Is there beef between Jay-Z and Wayne, I, I'd never really uh, heard that as a big thing before. I don't know. What, did did I, you know I, this? Did you, I'll say okay. I'll say two things. I think there's enough room for something special to still happen because you're dealing with a lot of smart people and organizations in this, and everybody, you know, wants to please the, the crowd, please 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 the people. So maybe there might be a surprise appearance, or maybe things might get worked out. Uh, I would hope so. But one of the things that's interesting, this has come up because, you know, I'm a big YouTube person and sometimes I go down rabbit holes I don't wish to go down, but things can be entertaining. And I came across a um, some footage of Jay-Z uh, explaining, I think he was on The Breakfast Club or something like that. He was explaining how he almost signed Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah. So and he was right. really close to signing him, but out of respect for Baby that he had uh, reached out to him and told him, hey, we, we might be doing this. And Baby didn't react in such a welcoming way. And right, um, right. Jay-Z decided to fall back out of respect. So that's the only history I'm aware of, thinking that, you know, it, it's you know it's all good. Who knows what happened? Because that footage seemed like it happened, well, well a and, long time ago. So who knows? You and know? and I'll, I'll say this, um, uh, you know, being a football fan and kind of uh, knowing the how they announced this this was they just had the first game of the football season right you know they just had it i've never i do not remember i do not remember them ever announcing who's going to do a, a, a perform at, at halftime this early right. it's usually right. about halfway in the season you yeah. know like you know, you know usher's coming or rihanna you know they, I mean? make, like a big deal. they make a big deal out of it to create heavy anticipation yeah you know? yeah i mean yeah. for them to do it the, do this the first game just happened that's that's like i said there's plenty of room for some things to change that's what i'm smelling really? that's what i'm you're feeling to, you're, you're, you know what what trying to bring people together yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying i mean who knows why, it's you're big why build the football up. game but you're gonna bring it together okay yeah <laughs> it's a big build up and all of a sudden pop out of the ground here's a little wayne performing with and kendrick lamar is a very brotherly brother. You know what I'm saying? I, I, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, in, in uh, comparison or putting it beside his current hit. But, you know, he 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 loves his loves his brother in the culture. So who knows, you know, that he might, you know, want to come up with an idea to say, let's let's do something, you know, not let's there's some powers that be that just ain't trying to hear it, period. So we'll see, you know. Right, right, right. It can be resolved. And like I said, they they announced it so early. You know, there's there's plenty of time for uh, a lot of moves to be made, and yes. uh, we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, let us know how you feel about this because people are you know people are conflicted. Some people are like, wow, you know, Kendrick had this great year, but Lil Wayne has, has put uh, you know has more experience and maybe got more more joints that that people know. So you know, let us know how you feel about that. You want well, you well how about that? us working on getting another Super Bowl commercial? That's what my eyes is on. Oh, that'd be great. No problem with that. <laughs> hey, for granted. <laughs> so anyway, with all that being said, I think it's time for that very special time that um that that we look forward to that we get together with friends in right. the business. But there's a thing called family, you know. And speaking uh -huh. of someone who has had a great who has great years, next uh, this, on the mic. Yeah, our, our person right now is uh half of uh, an incredible group that, you know, if it wasn't for them, I don't know if there'd be a kid in play. So nope. without further nope. ado, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Cheryl Salt James. What's uh -oh. up, girl? Hey, you go. Look at her. You look, you look, you look very Cleopatra-ish. <laughs> That's what I was getting ready to say. Where's the uh, Game of Thrones throne beside is, behind her? Where are your pyramids? Very 90s. I still love the 90s. 
Oh, do who you, you telling? I do. <laughs> give, like, me, give me some 80s in there as well. Give me. Oh, 80s yeah. 80s, 90s. Still no. yeah. This generation is enamored with the 90s. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank it God. It, it, it helps is, us. Is, I remember when my kids were growing up, all they they would they would really nag me to give them like my old all our old gear from the 90s. You know, right. it, was, it was a lot colorful and more fun. Yeah. Yes, we had so much fun. Hey, when are you gonna so sign mine? Shirt. When are you gonna hey, sign you mine? Put it last time I saw you, I would have signed it. Send it to me. Well, I didn't have it. I forgot because I'm in the midst of moving, so I always have to cross my fingers on when I open a box, what's in it, you know. So yeah, I came yeah, across you, that. For you people that are listening, it? that was that was a Funko Pop for people that are listening. Okay. Oh yes, the Funko Pop doll. Funko Little Pop doll. doll. Yeah, little, little salt. salt. The salt and pepper is here. Hey. With the with the kente, with the kente. Yes. Hey. So hey. how are you? And what's how are you? What's new? What's going on? I'm good. I'm good. I'm doing well. I'm here in LA. I moved here about three years ago. I've been seeing my boy kid. We've been hanging out. I and, told uh, you. I told <laughs> you. Oh, I just bought a house. Did I tell you? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I heard I heard you bought yeah. some land and you're going to build a house. That's what well, I, I built it. It's going to be finished in December because I've been yeah. here um, in a condo for the last three years trying to decide if I want to stay here or not. But then when yeah. I go back to New York, that weather, I can't do it. I'm I can't you. want you in this L.A. sunshine for a while. So both of you every time, every time I saw you, every time we came together, was I not lobbying for LA? I was I was always, I was like, I felt like I was on the Chamber of Commerce. I was like, man, or, or, or I was, I became anti-New York. I was, man, you don't want to go back there, man. You don't want to go back there. Sure was. And, and you no were slush, right. You no know, slush Love out here. <laughs> Love New York, but that traffic and that weather. No, no. It. And this is this is a different look. It's like like when I came out here many years ago, it was it was the right move for me at that time. You know, mm -hmm. and and I think you you're you know what I mean. If it, it feels the vibe is you're at a different stage in a different uh, uh, yeah. part of your life, and yeah. I think sometimes a new environment, uh, new experiences. I think sometimes that's part of it, and that's what I was hoping. I was hoping, man. I was like, please don't go back to New York. Stay I mean, out yeah. here. And the more I figured out, the more the longer you stay, the more the sun get yeah. on you. Yeah, and, and it'll it would uh it would turn you against New York. So yes. <laughs> that vitamin D is great. Yeah. it's something else. I mean, I honestly felt like that when I first started living out here. It 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 the sun because we see it every day out here. It really lifts your spirits. Yes, and it yeah, made yeah. it made me wonder like how did we make it? Yeah, growing well, up in New York. Yeah, it was. We it never was saw the sun. Yeah, but anyway, because play is like, all right, now on the LA, where you what, at now? What, you said what, you're what, moving what, again. Where are you moving to now? Whatever, whatever makes y'all sleep well at night, I'm all, all for right. it, to convince <laughs> yourselves. But anyway, I'm in Virginia now. I am um, uh, on my fourth HBCU, working with Virginia State University. So nice. when I'm not um, when I'm not on the uh, on the on the stage with the KID. I turned back into uh, Christopher Martin, like uh, Kwame once said, man, you're like the Indiana Jones of hip hop. You know, you <laughs> you do your adventures on the weekend and then you're teaching, you know, in a university on the weekdays. So that's my spiel. That's my yeah. thing. You, you do know. wear a lot of hats. Right. Hey. So, so, you, so you're going to make it permanent in on the West Coast. Yes, permanent for now. <laughs> okay, and and just just uh, you know just as before we get into it, get into it. Um, you know, I'm I'm just curious, and I, I want our audience and viewers to know, like, um, you know, what what what, what was behind that? Because it's it's a big move, no matter if you do it in yeah. your twenties or or yeah, later yeah. later in life. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but you decided to do it, and then you know what 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 was um. I don't know what was the crucial moment when you like you know what i'm gonna make yeah, it permanent yeah. well you know we've been coming to la for over well over 30 years i remember our first trip to la were you guys with us when we stayed at the roosevelt hotel you better yo, believe me. Yo, like, yo los angeles we were walking on the 
Walk of Fame and staying in this beautiful old hotel. I was like yeah. enamored from that moment with um, LA. And, you know, we've always gone back and forth. And in my back of my mind, I said, if I ever move, that's the only place I could see myself moving to. And then, you know, I ended up divorced. I, was, I raised my kids in Long Island, grew up in Brooklyn, started my career in Queens um, and raised my kids in Long Island. And then the divorce happened, unfortunately, and the kids moved out. And then I was in this house where I raised my kids and it just felt like I was living with ghosts, you know, because I had weddings there, big Christmases. Like it was so much that happened in that house. And now I'm like here by myself. So I'm like, OK, this might be the time I need to make a change. And well, I you just, and I, you and I weren't too far from each other because you were in I was in Syosset, Long Island, and I was like about two, three exits away from you. We were one of the two few people that did Long Island when everybody was doing Jersey and, yes. and all of that stuff and stuff. Yes. Yeah. So once you ended up with an empty nest, what happened? Yeah. So I just uh, I felt really lonely in that house and just was, it felt absurd. You know, some people try to hold on to homes and I think a home can kind of be an anchor, you know, that keeps you stuck. And um, I love my house, but I felt like. I needed to do something different. And so I just said, this is the perfect time to try Los Angeles. So I came and um, got a condo here, rented a condo. And I'm like, okay, I can't stay here too long. And three years later, I ended up purchasing a house. I made my decision, but if I have a grandchild, I'm going back to New York. <laughs> so um, Peppa's in Vegas though, right? Yes, Peppa's in Vegas. She's she in was Vegas. out here for a while too, but she lives in, in Vegas. Yeah, so now. both of y'all did the West Coast thing. And yeah, your home in Long Island was really lovely. I remember your recording studio and yeah. it was very, very beautiful, very, very beautiful place. And uh, yeah. yeah. I've always had a recording studio in my home. So I think yeah. um, you, you, the future, uh, well, that's, well, this, we're, the three of us have all been divorced. <laughs> So let's, uh, let's yeah. can, we, can we please have a moment of silence for love? No, I'm making all the noise in the world for celebrations. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Divorce is yeah, hard. I mean, it's a hard thing to go through. It's hard, man. I mean, it, it's, it's something I personally didn't want, but, you know, things are what they are. And it's like you learn so much from that experience. I think it's very humbling. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you I mean, I don't know how other men feel about it, but when you deal with rejection and all kinds of stuff like that, you end up going through, you you change and prayerfully yeah. for the better and be more sympathetic to others because a lot of people go through that, you know. Yeah. So it changes you deeply. Yeah. Those those were those were dark days. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I dark. Know I'm and it's, like, I'm like, and it's funny that did, did any did any of us reach out for each other to give each other hugs and console? It's like I mean, that's I mean, just, I mean, that's, I sometimes that's yeah, sometimes it's just between you and, and God, you know what I'm saying? I had the shades that. drawn. I wasn't coming out the house. The bad part was Woo. there'd be some days, you know, you're going through it or whatever. And um, and then I gotta go on go on stage and tell jokes. You know yes, I mean? yes, <laughs> talk about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have, well, me, you well, me I'm doing me, butt. I'm doing me, I'm doing gospel stage plays out there on the Chitlin circuit and stuff, you right. know. Right, but you know what? What yeah. what and I think and, and you guys can can speak to this uh, uh, as well. Um eventually, you know, it gets better and a lot of times those performances and the audiences, they kind of help you get through it because mm -hmm. they like you unlike mm -hmm. the person that you're getting divorced from. <laughs> like, they like the audience they actually really like you. <laughs> Well, me when it was time to do a crying scene on stage, they didn't know I was really crying. So, you know, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. I mean, that is the side of um, being an artist that a lot of artists don't really uh, talk about. And you guys, y'all are super vulnerable. So I'm glad we could have this type of conversation. But yeah, I remember crying like I would literally be crying before I go on stage and I would have to pull it together. And like you said, kid, it does help because being on the road at that time, being busy at that time and being out there like performing for your fans, it kind of gets you, helps get you through it opposed to just not yeah. being busy, you know, totally. and that love totally. just like fills you up. Totally. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, it's something I experience, and I, and I tell other friends of mine, the, the many friends of mine that have gone through a divorce, busy yourself. 
Yes. Yeah. Whatever absolutely. you're doing, busy yourself. And 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 luckily for all of us, you know, we you know we still had to we still had shows to do. We still had commitments. We still yeah. had uh, television appearances and what you know all the various things that we all do. Um, yeah. And it kind of busy yourself. Then you get the love, and then it, you know, and it gets better. I mean, I laugh about it now, but those the the as dark as those days were, it's uh, I, I you know I laugh now, and yeah. and I know well, what I do. I celebrate because there's certain things, certain songs that played, certain things that went on around that time. There was just it seemed like it added to the misery. But now yeah. when you hear any of those things today or see them, I laugh. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm, 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 praise, I'm praising God because there was light at the end of the tunnel, and thank yeah. God it wasn't the train. You know what I'm saying? So yo, it's so yo, good. check this out. Check this out. I got I got a story that speaks right to that. All right. So um, we, you know, my my ex-wife and I <clears throat> were separated, right? We were separated. So I move out, and um uh Bill Maher, who's who's you know, who's the good friend. He mm -hmm. said, yo, until um, you figure out what it is you're going to do, I have a guest house. You, you know, and it's, it's just this big uh, estate and mansion. He says, I got yeah. a guest house. So, you know, just, you know, you know, lay up there, post up there until you figure out, you know, if you're going to get back together or you're going to break up, whatever, whatever. You know, I ended up being there for, for a few months and whatnot. But I remember when I was kind of unloading my stuff. Um, I was looking at, you know, my CDs and there was you know, I have my, my, my box and and. It was a Maxwell CD, and I was mm. looking at it, and I was like, "Ooh, man, that, that was, you know, at Maxwell, you know, I made a lot of love to, yeah. to my ex with this Maxwell. I don't really think I'm, I'm ready to listen to it now. So it's almost like, you know, in the cartoons when, when the good, the good guy and the bad guy pops in over your shoulder, and the one guy was like, "Yeah, man, play that Maxwell, man. You listen to Maxwell before that chick, don't." You? And the other guy was like, "I don't think that's a good idea." It's very early in the breakup. And you no, nah, man, you better play that joint. Play that joint. <laughs> so I put it in and I played it as soon as I put it on. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That's saying you down the rabbit. The box. Well, yeah. at, least, at least yours was one, mate, one way. Mine was a totally another because shortly mm. as we're going through the divorce, she is a deep story behind it, but I'll get edited. She ends up doing a music video for Black Street before I let oh. you go with uh, actor uh, Omar. Um, and every day, like that song became a big song and the music video. So here I am having to see my ex wife in the arms of another man. Here's this song that I was supposed to be in that video with her, but some shady stuff went on. Enough said about that. Fast mm -hmm. forward to today, that song comes on. Such a big smile comes on my face because, you know, you've been delivered. You're free from that bondage, from that heartache, yes. or whatever the case may yes. be. You can mm -hmm. smile. You can even listen to the song now and sing along with it, or whatever. So yeah. it's just funny. Now it's your turn, Cheryl. You yeah, share yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have a song like that? Yeah. Well, you know, all, all when I as we have aged, what I realize is there's really no growth apart from suffering. It just it when we're comfortable and. <clears throat> We don't have a, a challenge ahead of us or something to get past because there's so many things we learn from that situation. So many things we learn about ourselves, you know. Um, and for me, it was a ringtone. Like mm. I used to get calls with this ringtone. And then I also had a gospel playlist because, you know, I was I was begging Jesus through the whole entire thing. Like, Amen. like, really, like, Lord, help me. Like, I've never felt this type of pain before I would wake up in the middle of the night because not only is it pain it's anxiety because you built this life with this person I had children with this person the business with this person it's a community of people that are being like ripped apart it's affecting your children <clears throat> it's affecting your health and so yeah I had a ringtone that I can't listen to to this day even though i'm past it that ringtone like i don't know something vibrates inside of me because no, i that get it i get it i get it it's like, it's like a trigger it's like a trigger it's like a trigger is so weird yeah. and believe it or not viewers and listeners this is still the fun house i know <laughs> 
<laughs> this is the fun house with soul. Like no, no, this is still the fun house. No, we no, actually no. go. We actually go there with uh, with okay. the guests. This is no, not no, no, unfamiliarized territory. You know, we renamed it. We renamed it this week. This is the sad house with That's skin it. and play and salt. <laughs> we might not. We might not be able to tell you what to do, but we can sure not be able to tell you what not to do. Not you know, this party at the sad house. Oh no, we are, we in the happy house now. That was before. This is now. That's true. That's true. That's true. All right. So Wait, so I'm anyway, gonna... I'm sorry. Go yes. ahead, kid. Yeah, no, I was going. I was going to do a quick pivot. I mean, I'm. I surely. I'm and so was I. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I appreciate. Wait, no, but I appreciate everybody. You know, just kind of sharing their, uh, their, uh, their previous, uh, their previous misery. You know, uh, uh, but I, I think you should. You should probably do this. Get into the history with this. With this. With this. Uh, with this lady. Well, the thing is, it's interesting because. Shar, how did you feel about y'all's um, uh, bio movie, biopic? Oh, Lord, y'all know I'm going to keep it real and ask me questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I'm bringing that up is because they took creative license in regards to how the story was. And I remember there's a part when I watched it on the premiere night, I guess we all did. And right off the bat, when I'm introduced, your your character's telling the Pepper character, uh, don't talk with play. He's a dog. You know what I'm saying? He don't, he don't mess with anything. And I remember texting you going, yo! And you was like, yo, it's not my fault. It's the director or whatever the case may be. It was hilarious. <laughs> but with all of that being said... I uh, mean, you your know, name was Playboy. Yeah, you know, so I couldn't <laughs> argue it too much. But what made it so interesting is the, they took creative licensing, a lot of editing and people in places that weren't really there. But it was such remembering that time was is so special because who would ever thought that any of us that working at Sears Roebuck and everything we was doing prior to that, it was going to lead to where we're at today and talking about the kind of stuff that we talk about, who we know, what we do and yeah. being a part of fame. You know, what's your yeah. thoughts on the, the whole evolution and your journey? Yeah, I mean, it still kind of is wild to me, you know, Surreal. Our, it is so surreal. Yeah. Like, it's like having an out of body experience, you know, for me to even think that, you know, there's probably not too many um, countries that don't know hidden play that don't know salt and pepper. And how did that happen? You know? Um, but personally for me, when I became salt of salt and pepper, it was really um, something I desperately needed. And I was, Graduating from high school, barely graduating from high school because of some, you know, issues I was having as a as a teenager, and then went to college because that's what you're supposed to do. But I knew I didn't belong there. Um, I wasn't a school person, you know. I, I'm the person that says school ain't for everybody, you know. So <clears throat> ended up meeting Herbie, meeting Sandy, and you know the whole story. Sears yeah. Road, and you guys worked there. Martin Lawrence worked there. Salt and Pepper worked there. Herbie. Our producer works there. And when I got on the mic for the first time, I just remember something really deeply changed inside of me where I just knew that I knew that I knew that this is what I was supposed to do. It was more destiny for me than um, a career that I was like pursuing because we all know, you know, once Salt and Pepper started, we hit the ground running and it was like just this train ride to success. Um, and I say hip hop. I feel like it saved my life in a sense that um, I would have been doing something that I wasn't happy doing if it wasn't for this. Didn't save my soul. Jesus saved my soul, but it did save my my life from, I feel like it would have just been, it was nothing else I was supposed to do. That's how I felt. And then from there, you know, building a career with Herbie, with Peppa, with you guys, it just became our life it was our whole life and it was fun we had a lot of fun well what's so interesting to me is you know yeah you can make a hit record you could be in some music videos and all of that but what's interesting to me is how now the the word applies iconic you know what i'm saying yeah. in regards to the look the style dancing all mm -hmm. of that that we ended up being the poster people for that and i think one of the things that resonates the most whether it be kid and i whatever those combinations would be, you and Pep, uh, uh, Spin, Wiz, all of us, there's a representation of friendship 
involved. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't mean we're perfect and we we never have a day of um issues, but that's what even when we talk about the divorce and stuff, I've come to realize that something kids said a long time ago, I forgot what it was in reference to, but what and it's a, a cliche you hear quite a bit, but it comes to life in your in your in your world. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You know, and I'm learning how to be prayerfully a better friend, a better human being, all of that, where mm. sometimes you go through what we go through. You could be very bitter, very cynical, you know, yeah. and all of yeah. that. So, you know, yeah. 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 Where, where'd, you, where'd you disappear disappear to, KID? Somebody knocked on my door, man. I had to go check and see what's going on. <laughs> you had to do him a favor and let let him in? Yeah, I, I didn't. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know. It's, it's hot. You know, I'm sterile. You're out here. It's It's been hot as hell these last few days. So, yeah, it has been. I haven't, I haven't gone out during that heat wave. I see yeah. it. But play when you were asking about the movie, um, you know, make making a movie about your life, um, like you said, the creative license, it can be a challenge because you know, you have to hand over your story to the directors. You can't get all in, you know, some things you really want in there, you can't get in. Some things they gotta cram into one scene to tell a story, you know, really fast. But overall, I feel like Lifetime did a good job, you know, and at least telling the story of Salt and Pepper, like chronologically, how we got, but I feel like there's a deeper story to tell, you know, even with you guys, like the whole idol makers situation is incredible how Herbie, you know, started idol makers and all the, like people say he was the first Diddy, you know, he was the first bad, idol makers was the first mm -hmm. bad boy. And I don't, when we were doing it, we didn't, we weren't cognizant of, we were just mm -hmm. like one foot in front of the other. Like we know we supposed to be here, you know, so let's do what we got to do. And the way that we interacted with each other in the studio with each other, in each other's videos, you know, all of that. I look back on it now and I'm like, that was pretty incredible. And that is an incredible story that hasn't been told yet. The idol maker story. So yeah, yeah that's I something agree. Herbie. I was just with Herbie not too long ago in the DR, and we were talking. We always talk about that, and the fact of how, you know, the idea we would brainstorm it is that yes, you have the overall umbrella, what everybody knows in regards to the successful movies and music and music videos and all of that. But everybody has their d incredible journeys that led to that mm -hmm. place, you know, mm -hmm. that isn't boring. They're quite exciting and quite interesting to say the yes. least. And it all brought us to that particular place. But what's, what's good for you now? You have a glow about you. You have a-, a, a I do? A, a, yeah, you do. You know, you got a, a, we just was celebrating Wiz's happy uh, wedding uh, to uh, Wiz and his beautiful bride. But, you know, we were all there at the wedding. And um, I know you went to kids' birthday party and stuff. So every time when I- peek my head up into social media. I'm like, okay, all right, all right, wait, I see you. Wait, I heard, a, I heard a rumor, I heard a rumor. Oh Lord. I heard a rumor and I want to put it out there. Okay. But I heard it, the street, what, like Clay likes to say, <clears throat> the streets are talking, the streets been but talking. But listen to how you introduced it. You said, I got a rumor that I want to put out there. <laughs> well, that, <laughs> I, I said that completely wrong, I apologize. No, I've, I've got a, a not I don't know a theory or or just a something I heard something I heard on the street that um, that you Cheryl Salt James were uh, instrumental or you were a proponent you were a a a, a supporter of our our DJ DJ Wiz DJ Wiz from back in the days of his getting getting married. I heard you I heard you were in full support. Would that be accurate? Uh thank you, kid. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean I yeah, him. man. It's like I'm I'm giving him inside information to encourage him that love yeah, is real. Not. And here he is putting I, it ain't the streets he heard it from, it's me he heard it from. But go ahead. Well, you were standing in the street at the time. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Um I got to talk into um, um, Wiz's- Mrs. Mrs. Eastman. Mrs. Eastman at your your party, kid, actually. Oh, uh -oh. so I'm all right. That's yes. what I told you. It's a six degrees of separation here. Oh, oh, yeah. 
So anyway, we got into a deep conversation. I had seen her a few times. So, you know, in Cheryl fashion, sometimes, you know, I just be like zooming right. in on people. And sure. uh, sheriff. Sheriff. I was sheriff in that night. And I was just basically like, you know, you're such a beautiful girl. And you and Wiz been, you know, together for a really long time. And like, why aren't you guys married? You know, and she started talking to me. And I was basically, I wasn't trying to push them to get married because everybody should know when for their adults, you know what I'm saying? But I knew she wanted to be married and she wanted to have uh, children. And I'm like, well, what are you guys waiting for? Basically, is how I remember it. She told it in a different way. I, I have it on, I have it on, I have it on video, a matter of fact. But yes, look what you done did. You know what I'm right. saying? But, but how about this? How about this? Just the concept of look, cause, cause guess what? I'm I'm I don't think any of us are are against love and and uh, you know being being with someone, even though even though uh, it didn't work uh previously for us. So I'm so I'm saying, I mean, to me that's an interesting um uh vibe. You know what I mean? Because yeah. even though we, you know, we're you, you're, you're not down on love, is what I'm saying. Yeah, absolutely. Is that accurate? Yeah, and they're both Christian. You know what I mean? And I know that she wanted to be married, and knowing Wiz, I figured, you know, here's the thing: we can hold each other up for a long time, whether you're married or not. Are you committed? You know, we don't have a lot of time to play around and I'm I felt like she's just a young vibrant beautiful woman and I advocate for women standing up for what they want and if this is not you know it then you can't waste a lot of years I was married for a long time you know to basically a person that I probably shouldn't have been married to and him as well we weren't equally yoked and we like dragged out this relationship even when we broke up it was a four-year breakup then a four-year divorce so when I see women like staggered you know I just like to say girl you gotta advocate for yourself because you don't have a lot of time well it was a beautiful ceremony and I was honored and because he proposed to her in the DR and it was a, a pretty big surprise. So everything worked out and is working out really, really well. Yeah, and let and me that, add, they called me one day and they thanked me because they said they wouldn't have done it and they're so happy and I hope it lasts. <laughs> this is gonna be nah, my they, they, they're good. They, they, they're, they're good. But in a very poor segue, you know we got to ask you the question probably everyone asks as they ask us. Getting back into what the show was based on and it being, the show wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the culture. What do you think about hip hop and hip hop today? Um, and yo, let me put a double question in, and your contribution to it. So honestly, I don't really listen to music. I would be lying if I said, you know, I, I even listen to hip hop. <laughs> you said, no, no, no. What no, me mean? too. I mean, I was like, right oh, yeah. here, I, I hear you. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's like the pendulum has swung really far in one direction and it needs balance from what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. Um, I think the way it started, the way we started, you know, it didn't, we're not, we're in a place where I feel like it's just gone to an uh, extreme, right? Because we had Missy Elliott, the innovator. When it comes to women, we had little Kim, she was the sexy one that was outspoken about her sexuality. We had salt and pepper. We bought fun fashion and femininity. We had Lauren Hill, you know, who was the consciousness of hip hop. Then we had Queen Latifah, who was the UNITY, you a queen. And now it just feels very one sided. And I would love to see um, the doors being open for women who have a variety of things to um, say and contribute. And that's how I feel about it. Yeah, sometimes it reminds me of our our, our, our friend and pastor, Dr. A.R. Bernard, the quote that he once said, when you take a truth to an extreme, it becomes error, error you know? Yeah. And yes, we we had, we we're uh, very honored to have Roxanne Shante, and she was sharing with us the viewpoint of those that we may judge, but you just never know what they've gone through in their life prior mm -hmm. to having this opportunity to have the stage and to and yeah. get attention but yeah. that's just one person's um witness and journey there's so many other you know diversity in regards to people yeah. where they come from not everybody came from a broken home 
and yeah. some people have, but you know, to have that opportunity to um, I, I hear those stories. Yeah, I totally, and I also I totally. think there is an agenda, like the 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 fact that um, a, this particular kind of rap is being the one that is highlighted and pushed and celebrated. That there, to me, it seems like there's something behind that. Whether we're talking about over sexualized or whether we're talking about violence in hip hop, it's just has to be something behind it. And as a spiritual person, I see it from a spiritual perspective as well. You, Go ahead, Kate. I say this, I, I, yeah, I say this all the time. I tell this story all the time when you know when I'm in a you know when I'm in a bar arguing about hip hop, you know, <laughs> I'll always hold up salt and pepper as this uh, as the paragon of 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 female uh you know female hip hop and uh, and and comparing it uh, to to the ladies of today who uh, rhyme skill wise and you know cadence wise they're mm -hmm. they're very talented mm -hmm. i think what we're talking about is the is the content yeah you know mm -hmm. the, it's the content and i would always say well how come how come salt and pepper were uh fully clothed but very, very feminine, very sexy. And they had lines like, we just met. We can't do that yet. Hey. We just met. We can't do that yet. It's not, yeah. I'm mm -hmm. busted. I'm busting. But everything busted, 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 busted. How? Yeah. Busted. <laughs> How you doing? Busted. <laughs> we just met. We can't do that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we were talking um, from a perspective of, you know, who we were, right? And so... It was our music obviously was a reflection of what we felt, who we were, you know, and it was always important to us to uplift women, not only to be strong and independent, but to be feminine, to be yourself and so on and so forth. And I just think about the children, right? The kids that are being raised by this generation of hip hop and how it is so one-sided. It kind of like, I just feel for, for young ladies because I feel like a woman needs to, a girl needs to grow up knowing, I raised a daughter, she needs to grow up knowing that she is more than what she physically has to offer, you know, a man, you are more than your sexuality. Well, I have a question I've been wanting to ask all our guests and for some reason I forgot to ask. Uh, so I'm gonna start now with you. Aside from your own catalog of music out there, what song by any other artist you wish you would have made? Oh, wow. You guys start first because you know, I'm like, what well, song I wish I would have made? Mm. Oh, wow. That, that's, a, yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, that's what yeah, I want you, to start asking yeah, all of our guests. Play. You first. Well, I, you and I, I asked that question of you before in one of our early episodes. And I, there's many I could think of, but the one that always comes to mind quickly is Hip Hop oh. Hooray. Oh, uh, the anthem. Because as an anthem, and I always felt that song could even go further than it's gone, which has done great. But yeah. it's something about that song that to me is like an official hip hop joint. It's uplifting. It's dope. Yeah. And there's others out there, but the, that's the one that comes quickly to mind. I've got one. Hip -hop parade. I've got one. I've got one. What's that? And there's probably a few of them, but but I, I've thought of this before. I wish, I wish we had done or or wish I, I've written or performed uh, Will Smith's Summertime. Because mm. it's, it's never going to mm. die. Yeah, you know I mean? good ones. Like, yeah, it's mm -hmm. never going to die. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it'll be here long after we're all gone. And yeah. just, I mean, and it was, it was, if you know, I'm, I'm sure you know, y'all remember. It was kind of out of character the way he rhymed. You know, he was, well, no, he was, he was accused. He was I know. I thought this that he was trying to sound like Rakim. He was totally sound, that for he was a totally long sound. time. And then recently, when he did one of the 50th anniversary of hip hop anniversary things. They have him. I think he put it up on his own channel where he admits that he did do that. You know, mm -hmm. he did try and sound like Rakim on purpose. Yeah. You know, and well, by the way, not, we all yeah. are influenced by someone's style, cadence, whatever. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. But when I ask you that, Cheryl, it doesn't have to be just other another female artist. Any rap song, you know. Okay, uh, I'm, Look, my mind. Song, song. It could be ain't no so mind high enough, you know. Okay, so let me just say a song. It's not a rap song, but 
speaking of anthems, I personally think the the best female anthem overall, and I think it's been slept on, is Sunshine Anderson's Heard It All Before. Oh, That's- I remember that joint. Yeah. <laughs> That yeah. song, me and Kid right. was out one night <laughs> performing that song for Herbie. Basically, we were like, ah! that's my jam right there. You must have fell and bumped your head. <laughs> <laughs> this is the street. Oh man, that song gets me. Well, crazy. that's that's what's great about good music, and when it's able to speak for you, and they just hit the nail on the head yes. all the time, and things of that nature. So, what's next? What's up the road now? for you girl um you know i i've been really into this um vegetarian vegan cooking thing like i'm discovering something that i really really like so hopefully that will lead to possibly you know a cooking show i think a salt and pepper cooking show would be amazing yeah um i'm taking a break from the road i've been home for for a while because you know it gets really 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 hard to be on that road so i'm waiting for a grandchild my daughter's been married 7 years and i'm just like come on girl give me that baby you're like I'm come like- on put it right here put it right here <laughs> Let well, it right go. Down, right I'll, down be there. I'll be there. I'll be there right there. She got- Until they become too much, you say, "Okay, time to take your baby home now." Yes, exactly. Yeah, you got to you got to catch the baby like on Martin when he caught the baby when the baby came out. Give me that baby. Give me that dog on baby. So hopefully that'll happen um, soon. And then I'm always working on music. Like I've been in the studio. Obviously, music is not a way to make money. I'm already famous. So I ain't trying to, you know, get more famous. But it's I've always wanted to try and express myself um, through through songs on my own. And so that's something that I've been, I got to send you some stuff. Both of y'all send it to you. Yeah, I love the piece you did with uh, Light. Uh, kudos on yeah. that one. That was a really oh, yeah, nice piece dope. and stuff. That was really good. So I enjoy the creative process. I enjoy the studio. I enjoy producing and writing, yeah. putting videos together. Like that's my thing. Salt of yeah. the earth. Well, in yeah, closing, yeah. I think some people would be interested in this. Do you have a favorite kid and play story? Since we've done so much stuff together, favorite anything that comes to mind. Kid and play story. Favorite kid and play. I mean, our my favorite kid and play times. I don't have a specific story. Yeah, I know you have some. Was just being on the road together and sharing a bus. Like it was so much fun. It was so much family. It was just so many laughs and like, oh, my favorite kid, my funniest kid and play story is when we tried to. Combine our oh, show. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh, Go yeah. ahead. It Go was ahead. so bad. It was so bad. No, no. You know what? I, I, I. Just, it was a great idea. Mm-hmm. It was. I, I think we even executed it pretty good. It, yeah. I think it was just ahead of its time. And yeah. the song you know itself. Is? And the People song. People do itself. shows like that all the time now. Those freestyle yeah, shows. Like the big, big one. Four. Yeah. 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 They do so, that, so, but they didn't expect that back then. So for yeah. the audience, um, we did a Carib- was it a Caribbean tour together, and we decided that we were not going to just do our set, salt and pepper set, kid and play set. That we were going to make the songs, you know, go around like they come on, we go off. They come on, we go off. Yeah. And there was some idea we had that because we thought it was funny because Peppa is known to be kind of brolic, you know what I mean? So we, Pe- y'all used to call her the bruiser. Mm. And she was going to, we were doing a slow song and we're like slow dancing. I'm dancing with Kid and Peppa dancing with Play. And then we were like, you know what would be funny? If Peppa picked Play or picked Jerry's him off the stage. And cradled him like a beard. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. that, I was like crickets. Yo, nobody Look, got it. It was like, okay, what do we do with this? Yo, no, the funniest part, the funniest part was so she, you know, she's got she's got play in her arms, and then and then he just he just I laid his head into I cradled her. my head into the crook of her <laughs> neck and stuff. Oh, so tenderly. <laughs> Bum, bum, like that. And the crowd was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Right. But see, that's cre- that's how you create. It's a hit and miss. We, you know? yeah. If yeah. I remember, we did two shows. I think we did two shows. I think we did like Detroit and D.C. And after the D.C. show, it was like, all right, man, this, this shit ain't, ain't working. working. 
album and sales, the album sales, actually, album sales, album sales are dropping. Awesome. Yeah, those that was are a the great idea, though. Though to do to try something new, like Detroit, yeah, and those <laughs> <are> hard, hard <laughs> cities. <laughs> It's so funny how credit isn't given where credit is due, but people just don't know the history. Because when I hear people announce this is the first rap show or the first resident in Vegas, I'm like, no, it's not. You know what I'm right. saying? It's right. like, here we are at the at the Paris Casino and Hotel. And it's like, you see all these other people. So even with that, we were the first yeah. ones doing that mix type of stuff. But it's all yeah. good. Yeah, because anyway, now that works. The mix stuff works now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works now. We, like I said, we were ahead of our time. We were ahead of our time. Cheryl, we love you. Love like you I too. said before, bringing you on, I don't know. You know, God used y'all as a very, very important, intricate part of Kid and Play success. Some people consider us either the, the salt and pepper, the, the male version of salt and pepper, or vice versa. But publicly, I just want on behalf of Kid and I, and he could chime in on this, thank you so very much. So so very much. No, no, no. For, for, as my brothers, we're we're we're, we're, we're yeah we're woven together. Uh, you know, in real life and and yeah. uh, in the public's mind as well. And um, you know, I agree with Play. We wouldn't we would not have made it without uh, without your support, uh, without y'all allowing us to open up for y'all and dance in y'all videos. And you know, like you said, that early camaraderie and say, stay on your bus. We couldn't. We didn't have no bus. We on yeah. your bus watching Devil Doll from Hell. So, yeah. so you know what I mean? Oh, Devil Lord. Doll from Hell. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, we 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 couldn't uh, we couldn't agree more on that. And uh, yeah. and you know what? The, the great part is that um, we're all still here. And uh, I think I can speak for play on this uh, on this regard. That um, you know, you you. It seems like you're 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 in a different phase of your life. Uh, a very a bright light. Uh, interesting uh, exciting uh, slash scary new new plateau in your life so and true. I, I know you're gonna hit it hard and you know people wait I, and i know i, I want to tell people i know that your ig is the only salt yeah because i follow it every day da only yeah salt right the only salt and you, they can yes. check you out doing all these vegan meals yes. which look delicious but i will never eat Okay, you would love, love it. No, okay, you know well, what? let me I'll give play. you guys your flowers too. Thank you so much for everything you contributed to Salt and Pepper's career for singing on Let's Talk About Sex. People don't know, a lot of people don't know that that's you, kid, you know, being in the studio and helping us with our creative process and play for your drawings for creating the Salt and Pepper, designing the Salt and Pepper jacket you know there's a lot of things that you guys have also contributed to us even the the logo design like we are truly a family when it came to creating and supporting each other together so thank you so much also and give your family our best and you know i'm praying for dad right. and all of that so wait on that baby we love you love you too proud of y'all this is a good show hey thank you. yes Hey, how about that? How about that? Now that was that was that was a pretty good interview, man. We yeah. wait. The funny part is we start talking about everything but like music and hip hop. We start talking about getting divorced and well, new, that that's what friends, that's what friends do at the barbecue. You know what I'm saying? I remember that's the conversation I used to have. Have God bless his soul, heavy D all the time in regards to us getting to a place that we work because we want to work, not because we have to work. And when we all come together, we we talk about things that we've all gone through and celebrate life. So that's what's up, you know? So our girl, we, we'll we get Sandy on here soon. We'll get Pep on here soon as well, you know? No doubt, no doubt. So no anyway, doubt. should right. I go with the playlist? What do I have for the playlist? I do believe it is time for the, the another segment that the streets cannot stop talking about. It's the playlist tell them tell them about the playlist well what Play. the playlist is me being an aspiring cinematographer director just a content creator in regards to film especially documentaries i always am inspired i try and find ways to be inspired from the works of others mostly documentaries and um i have a great one for this episode and it's called okay. 80 blocks from tiffany's 
this documentary is crazy. And it's like when you see the title, you're like, okay, what's that all about? What is 80 blocks? What's going on 80 blocks from Tiffany's and what's going on at Tiffany's? A very well-known um, store oh, with a lot of expensive go. jewelry kind of place that girls wish you bring, women bring you to. to that's where you're going to get their engagement ring or wedding ring or whatever the case may be. But anyway, the film captures the South Bronx during an era that rarely cap this rarely captured on film. It also captures New York City just before the event of hip hop, the devastating effect of the crap, uh, crack epidemic and before the pro proliferation of gang gun violence. Originally filmed for NBC, uh, the film never made it to air and instead was released on VHS as an educational video. Over time, the film gained a cult following and was reissued on DVD in 2010. 80 Blocks from Tiffany documents the lives of gang members in the Grand, Can Grand Concourse area of the South Bronx between 167th and 170th Street. The film focuses primarily on the members of two gangs, the Savage Skulls and the Savage Nomads. I remember them well. And in that area, uh, with a high level of crime and urban decay, the film also deals with many social issues affecting the area and its residents, such as poverty, teen pregnancy, drug and alcohol abuse and illiteracy. So it's an amazing film because how can something that's so close and proximally to a place, a brick and mortar place that represents wealth and, and success and just short of 80 blocks away, here's all this mayhem and craziness and and things that took place during the crack era. I do remember the gang situation, even though we were in Queens. Oh, crack. Yeah. <laughs> even though we were in Queens, Queens, Bronx, other um, boroughs did have their, what you would call chapters of those gangs that would um, rule the streets. You didn't think about joining one of them gangs? You, you, you know, I was too joining. young. I was too young at the time when they were <laughs> popular and it was a thing. <laughs> Uh, there's another documentary I want to introduce in regards to the birth of uh, the gangs, the Bloods and the Crips out of uh, Compton in L.A. I'll, 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 I'll uh, get into that on another show. But you know, I looked up to them. I, I looked up to them. You know, you remember our dude that was on the road with us that we took Grave Digger? Uh, he, oh, yeah. was part, he was part of one of those gangs. You had a gentleman by the name of Spade and uh, quite a bit. I won't name any names because I have to put allegedly in front of it. But yeah, that was I looked up to them at the time, but I was too young to uh, to engage. You know, I waited to get into my own thing later in life. <laughs> right. I got plenty of time to break the law. I, yeah, I, exactly. And stuff. I'm so no, I highly room. recommend I highly right. recommend check out 80 blocks from Tiffany's. It's it's an extraordinary piece. Really, really good. All right. I'm going to peep that. I'm going to peep that. What you and got? Yeah, well, we move right along. Uh, it's the, it's the, it's another uh, it's another segment that that uh, the the streets aren't the hallways are talking about this. Yeah, man, I got the that mail coming in. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna show you those sacks one day. The cul de sacs are really are talking about my segment called uh, "Just Kidding." Uh, you know, we just look at uh, you know some things that are going on and uh, you know get uh, toss it back and forth and then. Uh, and hopefully get your y'all opinion as well. Um, recently, uh, the rapper singer Tory Lanez, Tory Lanez, who's in prison at this uh, moment for uh, shooting uh, Megan Thee Stallion uh, in the foot. Yeah, uh, that didn't that didn't go so well. Uh, but recently, he's gotten in trouble because apparently he smuggled in some recording equipment. Oh wow! And he's been he's been making music. Uh, within the prison, and to, uh, uh, I was checking that out. Um, the, apparently, uh, they, they, they called his prison tapes, uh, air quotes, prison tapes, a uh, prison tape series, and he's reportedly uh, trying to sell it, move it to, to acquire royalties, to acquire money, to appeal his case. Well, he got mm. busted. He got busted at, at this particular prison. Uh, I think it's like it's like it's 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 Northern California. Or yeah. you know, it's it's more north than Los Angeles, where I, where I'm at. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you, you can't. Do that. <laughs> it's as simple. It's as simple as that. You can't do yeah. that. You're yeah. Right. Apparently, apparently, you can't have a studio in your cell. Um, but but it brings to mind some of the questions, like how did you acquire that that equipment? I mean, I know the equipment 
is is quite advanced these days. It's not like you need like a big board or whatever. You like need that. it on a phone. People have done great things on their phone. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so yeah, so I'm, I'd be interested to find out the, the the means by which he got this stuff up in there. Interesting, and then also too. Uh, to your point, he's not the only uh, rapper that has uh, tried to record behind bars. Uh, uh, Slick Rick, uh, Shine, uh, Lil Wayne was in Rikers. I heard Kodak him talk Black. on television the other day. Kodak, Kodak Black. Black. So, so yeah. it, it's been done. Uh, if, if you uh, uh, viewers and listeners out there have a, uh, a favorite uh, a prison recorded um, <laughs> prison recorded album, um, how about this? It'd be like... Um, you know what I'm saying? You, you call the album, I Won't Be Home for Christmas. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's like, it is interesting because, you know, you, you could get away with what you could get away with, I guess, with the right connections, you know, with certain yeah. uh, people who work in the system that may be a fan of yours and they want to see yeah. you keep making yeah. music. So they'll look out and look the other way. Who knows? You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I heard, I heard Wayne on, on, on television the other day talking about it. Cause they asked him, yo, were you recording at Rikers? He said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, oh, we do it like late at night. Um, you know, when the, uh, the other uh, inmates were sleeping and he said the, the CEOs used to help him out because if somebody was making noise, they would shush from me. Like, hey, mm. so 22, shush. <laughs> you know, was, Wayne recording. So, so yeah, you're right. You're right. You're gonna need the help of uh, of the powers that be, uh, but you know that can always happen. There's lots of stuff that goes on in prison that you probably. Well, with all that know. being said, as we come to a close, let's ask each other that question: What did we learn today what from our learn? own podcast here on the Fun House? And that's a good question because I can't can't think of too much um, aside from maybe what you just shared. I you know the fact that. Uh, Tory Lanes is in the situation that he's in right now. I didn't know about that. And yeah. where there's a will, there's a way, I guess. I guess so, but he's gonna have to do it uh, another way. Um, you know what? I guess I learned that we can uh, we can do uh, interviews with the guests that uh, rare don't that barely talk about the music or the business, and you, we can talk about life and the things that uh, that we experience and that we go through. Uh, once again, big shout out to uh, Cheryl Saul James for joining us on the program. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that's what I learned. I learned that uh, the sh our, our show is growing. The podcast is growing. That's a good thing. And we want to thank those that are behind the scenes. Our co-executive producer, Jody Gomez, uh, Tristan, um, good looking happy out. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Tristan. Yeah. Happy birthday, our dude. And uh, also, um you know, just everybody behind the scenes. We just thank and big up to uh, Urban One and all of the platforms that you can watch and listen to um, our podcasts. And we're having fun with this. And there's there's more to come. Some good more to come as well. So you at the fun house. Peace. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. It's a podcast. Available on all streaming podcast platforms.